Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go a story titled, I abandoned my ex-girlfriend and her friends in another city after I caught her cheating. And a shout out to Anshu for sending me this story. Guys, this story is about a guy, just like in the title, who ended up ditching his girlfriend and her friends at a club after he caught her cheating. And the way she was cheating, who she was cheating with, I'll let you see, find out about that in real time later on in the story. And let me tell you, it was graphic. And I'm doing this one because, as you're going to see in the story, this guy here had been with his girlfriend for five months, but he'd known her a lot longer than that through her friend, uh, through her sister, who he is friends with. And wait to see what kind of friendship he had with the sister. And lo and behold, early in the relationship, she revealed to him that she's bi. She likes other girls. And was waiting to ask him permission to uh, explore those urges he has from time to time. In other words, ask for an open relationship. Bad idea. And instead of ending it right then and there for her saying that she's bi, because it would have let him sleep well at night knowing that, given the cheating stories and all, and the fact that she asked for the open relationship, he still continued to be with her. And you're going to see the direction this whole thing goes. And that'd be a go once again to remind you guys that if your girl brings up open relationships, wants to have permission to go hook up, not just with other girls. Hell, even bring them home. Unless you're into that lifestyle, it's a bad idea and you should end the relationship right then and there. Because otherwise, it's only a matter of time. Now, are there exceptions? Are there some good girls out there that, yeah, okay, they're attracted to women, but no, they're guys, they're guy, and, and, and they're not going to cheat on him or their husband? Of course, there are. There are some walking around the planet here. Probably I got a couple watching me now. But by and large, they bring that up. That's usually because they want to play. All right? And it's best to walk away. And you'll see more as I get into the story. He says, uh, so this happened on Sunday. Me, a 35-year-old male, and Maria, a 33-year-old female, have been together for maybe five months, but have known each other for 10-plus years. I met her through her sister, Maya, a 34-year-old female, uh, me and Maya used to work at a strip club in our early 20s, and for a while, we were friends with benefits till we both felt that more of a brother and sister vibe, and she became one of my best friends during that time. I uh, worked in a strip club, huh? So probably Maya, his friends with benefits, was either a dancer or a bartender or a wait cocktail waitress, and probably in that environment, she was up to no good, and this guy maybe was a bouncer bartender. They were friends with benefits, and then they stopped uh, all that, and now this guy is going to go out with her sister. How screwed up is that? You are hooking up with my friend, that type of thing? Or she's saying to her sister, you're hooking up with my boyfriend? Uh, so she quit the club when she got pregnant, and I met Maria at the baby shower. Maya has always been the black sheep of the family, while Maria has been the goody-goody in the family. Yeah, no such thing. Uh, their mom was very religious, and so was Maria, but not Maya or their dad. Their mom died maybe a year ago and a year and a half ago, though. Maya ended up setting us up uh, way back then, but I was moving away for a bit to work, so it didn't work out that time. How can your former friends of benefits, Maya, hook you up and have you date her sister, who is Miss so-called Goody Two-Shoes, and you two were hooking up? You don't think that's going to be a problem? Uh, we would hang out whenever I was in town, but the timing just wasn't right for a lot of reasons. Fast forward to this past summer when we reconnected at a bar when I was visiting some friends in that part of town. I live 20 minutes away and work a lot, so I'm not eat over there very often. I hadn't seen her maybe a year. We hugged and ended up talking all night and into the morning. She had definitely changed in the time we'd been apart. Oh, do tell. Define change. While Maya is very attractive, Maria is a certified baddie. She looks like a thick Becky G. When we were hanging out back then, she was really modest, but since her mom passed away, she opened up a lot and started dressing up and all that. Dressing up, you mean more like dressing down, being more revealing clothing. Religious mama dies, that's sad, but religious mama dies, and all of a sudden, uh, Maria is letting her freak flag fly. Uh, we talked a lot about stuff, and she told me that I was her first adult crush, and she kind of hoped we'd get married and have kids when we were young. Whoa, okay, now I'm going to, you know, go to the bathroom. I'll see you later. We were both drunk, but she started crying, and we went to her place and just talked all night. Is that all you did? She told me she loved me that morning over waffles when we were sober. Well, there's nothing like pancakes or waffles to get a girl to confess her love for you. 
what the fuck? It's not like, okay, they know each other 10 years and they on again, off again years earlier, but even then, way too quick. Way too quick for this love shit. Uh, so we started dating quick. Yeah, I got that point. And went official and all has been good. He should have dated way longer than that, dude. I do work a lot, but we spend all our free time together. The SCX has been great. She opened up about that, too. Well, mom was gone, so she can, uh, you know... But remember, Maria, mom was watching from heaven. She confessed that she's bi, but has only been with one girl when she was young, and is wanting to hook up with a girl with my permission. Goodbye. It's over. I'd be like, look, I got no problem if you're bi. Or any girl that's bi and likes both dudes and chicks. But as for a relationship, nope, not a chance. Now, obviously, there's some girls out there that are bi, but they're with a guy and they're loyal and loving, fine. I'm sure there's examples. But many are often having that uh, seven-year itch for the uh, fish tacos, if you know what I mean. And so you can never quite be 100% certain that you have her heart completely <laughs> or other parts. And now she's saying, wanting to hook up with other girls with my permission. Translation, open relationship. This is a bad place to go. You should end it with her right then and there. And you'll see I'm right. She knows about my history and that I've been cheated on multiple times by different girls. So I'm not into sharing like that. But she'd bring it up, she'd bring it up every so often, but I was, it wasn't something I'm interested in right now. So the fact that she keeps pestering about him, him about it means she's really down for the fish tacos. And probably some also Italian sausage. Not a good place to be. Girl brings up open relationship, open marriage, right? I'm by best to part ways. And why is she bringing this up all the time? Because her perception of this guy is that eventually he'll cave. Fast forward to this Sunday. She has a group of friends and two of them are getting married in a few months. Victor, a 34-year-old male, and Andrea, a 30-year-old female. As well as Jose and Reina. The engaged couple are getting married about three hours away and they wanted to go see how everything is and make more plans for that weekend. Basically, a mini vacation. We worked out a deal where Vic was going to pay for everyone's rooms, and I drive there because I'm the only one with a big vehicle to drive all six of us. Vic has big money, so it's not a problem for him, and I didn't mind driving. Okay. What could go wrong? So we had a good Saturday afternoon exploring and seeing the wedding site, and Sunday we were going to go bar hopping and stuff. We went to this spot that has a bunch of clubs and bars in walking distance, and eventually Jose wanted to go to a bar and see the second half of the Super Bowl. So the guys and girls split up, and we're going to be after the game. Okay, so you're down to places with clubs and bars and drinking and drugs and all that type of stuff. Guys are going in one direction, girls are going the other. What could go wrong? The girls end up at this gay club, so he walked over there and it was pretty busy. We got in and went looking for them. Gay club, huh? So isn't this, remember uh, Maria said that she's uh, bi, she's attracted to women? What could go wrong with drunken Maria going to a gay club? We found Andrea at the bar getting drunk and Reina was in the restroom. There was a long line and she said Maria went to go look for Andrea while she was waiting in line. So we go looking for Maria and Reina and Reina sees her first and I look on her face and start looking around. Reina doesn't even say anything and takes Jose and they walk away and Andrea's like, what the fuck? Then I see what is up. So the club has these little booths that open up like little cabanas. Oh gee, what goes on in those booths? There I see Maria getting fingered by some girl, basically, and some dude is grabbing her boobs and kissing her. Remember the part when she said she's bi and wanted to have permission to fool around other girls from him? And I said, this is a terrible idea. And that right then and there, nope, this ain't going to work. You know, uh-uh. There you go. First opportunity, gets alcohol in her and off she goes to the booth getting fingered. He was like basically tongue effing her. Vic looks at me like I was going to go start a fight, but I don't know. I literally felt dead inside and just left. I went back to the hotel and got my shit, then drove all the way home. <sighs> I'm sorry for this guy, but I saw this coming a mile away as the rest of you guys did. Now, he left them all there, which ain't cool, but you can't blame him for taking off. And when I say ain't cool, I, don't, I mean, because uh, there were dudes he left behind too, but the guy was losing it. At the end of the day, they can get transportation. 
Yesterday, Vic and Jose hit me up separately and said it was fucked up that I left them stranded, but they did understand and no hard feelings. But Andrew called me and said I was an a-hole and I should have listened to this manned up and confronted her then and would have seen that Maria was super effed up and not in her right state of mind. Okay, Andrea. So according to Andrea's female logic, um, because she was drunk, I should completely let it go that she was there in the little cabana booth with some other chick's finger down south, pleasuring her, and another dude there motorboating her boobs and kissing her and all that. I, sh I should let that go because the alcohol. Yeah, bullshit. Man up my butt. And I like how the bros are, yeah, they say it's a little fucked up you left us here, but they did understand, you know, they, they obviously got home, but you know what I mean? What a little crap. Supposedly she got wasted. I don't know. I've, I've seen her dr drink and she can hold her liquor, so that doesn't compute w well with me. Vic said after I left, Andrea went and got her and she started crying. And when they were to, and when they, when they told her, I saw everything. Maria called me and texted me, begging me just to talk to her this morning and showed up at my job, but I'm taking the rest of the week off so that I told her I wasn't there. Maria came by earlier and as soon as I saw her, I started crying. Smack! Never let him see a cry, dude. I haven't felt this way for so long. She told me she understands, and we talked for a while, and she told me she's going to tell her sister to just leave me alone, and I, I, if I wanted to talk her, to her, I will. Oh, my bad. Maya came over. Not Maria. I mixed it up. Maya, the, his former friends with benefits and friend, who fixed up with Maria, came by. Well, don't let her see you cry either. Uh, let's see here. She told me she understands. We talked for a while, and she's going to uh, tell her sister to leave me alone, and if I want to talk to her, I will. I just can't forgive betrayal, and she knows this. I've uh, cut family off for less, and nothing for me to drop someone out of my life that I have, too. I've been alone most of my life, so it doesn't matter anyway. Well, I'm sorry for this guy. This sucks. But, you know, you can see that coming a mile away with the whole I'm by, and, uh, you know, I want to have your permission to, on occasion, you know, have some fish fillet sandwiches from McDonald's, you know. So, but this is, it's over. End of story, move on. What really gets me is before all this was going on, she started bringing up having kids and getting married. Even making comments at the venue Saturday that I look handsome in a suit and we can get married in a flip-flop since she'd be happy. I can't get the look of her face out of my head from the club. Sorry this is so long, I just need to vent, I don't know. Now before I continue on with this update here, I want to point something out. This first part of the story was out in February 2023. So we're talking like uh, 14 months ago. And now we're going to go on to his update from just, uh, I guess, last week. So a lot's happened since then. But this guy, yeah, she's crying and I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. No, not happening. End of story. I would, I'd be done with her. End of freaking story. But he mentioned how he's been cheated on by lots of girlfriends. Oftentimes, a guy, now, there isn't a guy listening to this that probably has been cheated on just once. But for the guys who are cheated on all the fucking time by girlfriends, although those girls are a-holes, there's got to be something that guy is saying or doing that communicates to the girl's weakness that they can take advantage of the guy. That's what I have found out, you know? Now to his update. He says, hey guys, sorry, I didn't see this account very much. I wanted to post another sub about something else unrelated and decided to update what happened since, since I still get messages occasionally about it. First, I left some stuff out. One is that I'm an orphan. Not Batman orphan, but I lost both my parents before 18. I have a big family, like three blood-related families, and my stepfamily, but I'm technically an only child. My dad passed during my first semester of college, and I dropped out. And when I did, I ended up staying with my childhood BFF Derek and his family instead of my extended family for a bit, and we're still friends to this day. Also, I have a stepniece and nephew, and they're best friends with with my friend Maya's kids, so I would take them to her house and she'd pick them up for playdates. Maria, Maya, and the kids and their dad all and I lived together. Hang on. Maria, Maya, the kids, and, and their dad all lived together. Okay. Maya owns the house technically, and she actually put Maria through school, and now Maria has her master's and she pays the bill at the house. The dad does the mechanic work there for fun, but he's older and basically retired. Okay, so. Unfortunately, he's going to be running into Maya Marie on occasion because of the kids. And by the way, notice he said he's an orphan, both parents died. A lot of times when people 
particularly men, come from bad families, like maybe the parents died when they were really young, or it was a very ugly environment, they then hope one day to make it up by getting married, having kids, and having a good family on their own. Who can blame them? But the problem is with that situation is that's when usually men rush into relationships, or they don't take a lot enough time to really screen the girl because they really want to start over and make, some, make up for what they didn't have when they were young. And that could cause a guy to be too nice, too accommodating, and that weakness be perceived, that kindness would be perceived as weakness, and they get cheated on a lot. And that's what I'm kind of getting from this story. Now the update, he says, uh, when I came back, I basically broke down for a day. Then Derek came through and basically made me go stay with him for a few days with my dog. I said another comment, but the guys who went, Vic and Jose, hit me up separately, and we talked and they understood and didn't say anything else, just it's all good. Andrea called and bitched me out for not being mad enough or something like that, some bullshit, so I told her to go F herself, while Raina sent me the uh, negative emoji and sorry. Yeah, tell Andrea to go F herself. Good for him. Also, Andrea was cheating on Vic the whole time, and they didn't end up getting married. <laughs> and I'm sorry for Vic, but he dodged a big one. So Andrea, who was yelling at him in the first story that he should have manned up, and excused her in the cabana getting fingered and made, getting motorboated by some dude. Fingered by a girl, motorboated by some dude. She, he should have let that go because she was drunk. Andrea's a big giant cheater. Shocker. Vec has also become a good friend of mine and we hang out at the gym and park in the park once or twice a month. I really can only go to the gym once a week though. I have a super busy schedule. Andrea can eat a dick though no one talks to her. That's another story. Oh, I want to hear it. After about a week, I came home. Maria sent a few texts and calls, but she knows how hurt I was, and Maya convinced her to give me some space. Well, good for Maya. Maya was a stripper friends of benefits, but at least she's appearing to be on this guy's side. Somewhat. That month was the worst. But eventually, I had to work it through. After the second month, Maria waited outside my apartment early in the morning when I took my dog for walks. Not cool, Maria. He wants some space. And the man and dog time are special time. So we talked for a while, cried and such, and agreed to break up. That was it for a while. I think that breakup was pretty, you know, obvious when her get motorboated and fingered. But like I said, my niece and nephew are best friends with Maya's kids, so I still had to see her often. And honestly, she's gorgeous and still sweet, and I still loved her, and it hurt, but I was tough. Don't you start, my man. There's plenty of other physically gorgeous women out there, and I want to hear that sweet shit. All she likes is a sweet taste of taste of you-know-what. Until she started bringing me food at work for lunch. She said she missed me and just wanted to eat and no expectations or anything. What a load of crap. No woman is going to cook food or bring food to a dude at work regularly and, and expect nothing. She knows darn way the, 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 the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, and also women become more attracted and drawn to guys the less they see them, actually, when they can wonder about them and think about them and everything. Men become more attached to women the more they see them. So she's shown up at work all the time, so he can't get her out of his head and has food for him and all that to start manipulating. I'm sure she looked damn good when she showed up. Don't fall for it. That lasted for a few weeks, then one night she showed up at my apartment, and before I knew it, we were doing it. Smack! She bring a girl? Not cool, dude. You're gonna get up hurt? I didn't forgive her, though we agreed to therapy, and we'll see. She was already going, and we went together, and eventually I found a different doctor and went to therapy myself for my own issues. I was extremely insecure and still have a dozen issues, but I'm able to deal with them on a better level. Well, I'm all for the working on yourself part and probably figuring out why you're getting involved with women who cheat and things about you, you might be doing and all that stuff. But still, you shouldn't get back with her. One, because she cheated on you. And B, she's bi, was asking for uh, permission to hook up with other women. What makes you think that her attraction for women is ever going to end? It's not. Or this crap will happen again. And once a cheater, always a cheater. And you, she may pull this shit down the road when she thinks she's got you. One of the things I was insecure about was her too. She's very obviously out of my league, and she's always, but she'd always tell people the same thing when they asked why she was with me, that I have a big package and I could make her laugh and it was enough. 
We joked, but I felt like I didn't deserve her at the time. And at threesome, felt like she wanted more than me, and it hurt. Dude, don't beat yourself up so much. This whole, she's better than me and out of my league shit, that immediately makes a guy submissive. That's a terrible way to go. And women are completely turned off by that shit. Bitch, you're, I'm out of your league. Eventually, we worked through our stuff. We even had like three three-somethings, but she found she's really into the kink of it than the work. So now you're in, 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 uh, engaging in those activities. Now, if that's something you wanted to just for fun, okay, knock yourself. I'm assuming it was you and an, her and another girl. That's, that's, <laughs> I'm assuming that. But she's not girlfriend material, this shit. She talked about her sexuality also and that she likes girls, but she doesn't want to date one. So no poly accord star relationship. We were separated for about seven months, but we got back together towards the end of the summer. Smack! Oh, bro, how much pain and shit do you have to go through to understand reality here? I also been working out and eating healthier. I was extremely overweight when we broke up like 320 pounds, but now close to 260-ish, still got ways to go. Okay, well, you got that right. You dropped 60 pounds. That's wonderful. That's like 20, almost 20% of your body weight when you started at 320. It says, trigger warning, something bad happened. Oh, gee. Around the beginning of this year, she was hit by a drunk driver. Her car was totaled, but she herself wasn't hurt. But later we found she was pregnant, and we lost the baby. She was only about six to seven weeks, so it must have happened right after her last period. Well, I'm sorry she got into an accident and lost the baby, and that poor baby's gone. But I'm, I'm sure I'm thinking what all you guys are thinking. Um... Was her rushing to get back with him connected to the time period of, you know, you know what I mean? She found out she was pregnant. How do you know that baby was his? I mean, you have to ask these things. After that, she spiraled out of control. She took uh, the time off work and we wouldn't come, wouldn't come out of her room. I tried. Maya tried. Her dad tried. Nothing was working. And then one day she said she's going out of town and she's gone. She went to Mexico. She has dual citizenship and she has extended family down there. Then a month later, she wrote me a long message and basically broke up with me. We talked and talked, but she said she needs to get back in touch with God and herself. In other words, find herself. When women say they want to find themselves, that usually means I've already found a dude to replace you. Or in her case, I found a chick to replace you. She's not dating anyone, sure, and not, not plans to. Just wants to agree without us giving her the look. So basically, that's it. We text occasionally, but, but honestly, it hurts the both of us, so we kept it friendly, but not too emotional. I'm personally fine now. I'm able to deal with my emotions better, and yes, I was sad and heartbroken for a while, but I'm doing and will continue to do better. No happy ending, but I'm not sad either. I'm good enough. So, guys, not the ending that I had hoped for, you hoped for, but here's the point of the whole thing. Now, do you think she... Re okay, she was in a car accident. That can mess anybody up. I've been in a car accident in my life. A couple of Mac drunk driver hit me and some other dumb fuck hit me. It shakes you up. And she lost a baby. Okay, that, that can mess anybody up. I, get, I, I can't fully understand because I'm a man, but you get the point. Okay, I mess anybody up. But I know where she just takes off for Mexico. They're trying to rebuild and boom, she's gone. Without him knowing about it until she's gone. And now she's there finding God and finding herself. I'm sure she can find God in the United States of America. You don't have to go to Mexico to find God. But finding herself, you usually know what that means. I think this guy should take this second situation as time to finally cut all ties with her. End of freaking story. But as he said, he has a niece and nephew who are like his kids. And they go over to Maya's house all the time to have play dates and shit like that. And he may see it from her again. But he needs to rid himself with her and move on. I think this guy should continue on with the individual counseling and work out the shit that's caused him to obviously have problems in his life, maybe some childhood issues, why he may, and I guarantee he rushes into relationships and has that guy's cheat on, things like that. And continue on his journey to lose weight and get to a very healthy weight and be, you know, because he was obese. And that shit will really destroy your system over time. You don't need that. But anyhow, guys, it all boils down to the beginning with the open relationship thing. Attracted other gals, open relationship, because she didn't say that specifically, but we know what that was. And it just never works out. I wish this guy the best, but uh, we can learn from this story. All right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.